I'm the owner of this business here in Locke. The business name is Locke Art Center and I've been doing business in this location since 1989. So it's for quite a while. Actually I was born in China. Uh, that was in uh, 1952 and of course that was the time where there was a lot of turmoil in China where we uh, just faced uh, uh, one uh, big event after another. First was the Second World War where we, the whole country was almost occupied by the Japanese. And then later on, after we found off the Japanese, then it came time, time in China where the Communist China took over the country. And so at that point in time, I wasn't born yet, but then later on I heard from my parents growing up about how uh, my grandfather used to be a very prominent uh, merchant in China uh, before I was born but then unfortunately ever since the communist government took over uh, landlord or wealthy people becomes a target and thank goodness but that I heard from my uh, mother about my grandfather actually treated the, the employee employees pretty well so he get off the hook um, on uh, facing a public trial that uh, he wasn't fine to be a bad uh, owner so which means that all that he lost is everything that he owns his properties and his business at least he doesn't need to be locked up in prison and later on um, we go back to uh, our usual life and then of course my parents never feel safe under this new government so we start having the plan to leave the country and at that time the government was pretty loose because they want to uh, recruit more people to back up uh, communism so they just if you just go there to apply to leave they let you leave the country so that later on my parents told us that that was the best move that they made was not to trust the government but to apply to leave and settle in Hong Kong to start everything new and then of course I was very young at that time probably like about three years old so uh, I don't really know much but my memory goes back to the long trip leaving from my uh, village to <laughs> Uh, the city and then uh, heading to Hong Kong and all that thing a lot of time we move in the dark and all that thing so I still remember a little bit but uh, growing up in Hong Kong is not easy because at that time uh, together with uh, my family that actually over a million people start leaving China uh, not trust uh, the communist uh, government and so uh, living condition in Hong Kong is very very poor because Hong Kong everybody knows is a very small place and then of course makes it even worse when all of a sudden you have over a million people, refugees mainly, uh, settle down in uh, the same uh, area and so I remember growing up I don't have much uh, to uh, really uh, you know like most of the kids we enjoy like toys and everything you know in fact most of my time spent I remember was to help the family to line up for food and do this do that and all that thing and I wasn't complaining at all because I I thought at that time I was just like you know part of the way about the family thing just like you know you just mainly to make sure that we all got something to eat and cram up in a very small apartment with the whole family so uh, but then I remember we never really complained in fact a lot pretty pretty fast you know pretty soon that my brothers and my parents started to get jobs and all that thing so so we started a new, I, new, um, new life pretty, finished pretty my high school in Hong Kong and so at that time we were thinking what would happen 1997 when um, China took over uh, Hong Kong so we start concerning about you know maybe we shouldn't like have a whole family remain in Hong Kong that maybe um, some of us should start thinking about uh, migrated to uh, other countries like at that time a lot of people think about heading towards uh, Australia Canada 
in the United States. Uh, and then at that time, I, the only one in the family that uh, has full education in Hong Kong, which is under British colony, which means that I study English very young age. So uh, I adapted to that uh, Western uh, lifestyle uh, the best. And so uh, at that time, my parents asked me about uh, will I be able to uh, adapt to uh, uh, life being by myself and study abroad. And I thought about it, it's so difficult to get into a Hong Kong University <laughs> in those times, you know, like it's a big population competing with a very, very few uh, enrollment opportunities in the Hong Kong universities. So I just thought, yeah, I was young and I was, uh, you know, a lot of spirit and watching a lot of Hollywood movies and think about opportunity to come to this country, uh, that would be great. So uh, in 1970, I got accepted to uh, University of San Francisco. And so uh, that started my new chapter of uh, moving to the uh, United States and to San Francisco. And I graduate uh, with my bachelor's degree in 1974. And then later on, I also enrolled into uh, getting my master in uh, business administration. So uh, that's how I got started uh, my life here in the United States. Because the reason about uh, my family's investment into the lock property, that we actually purchased uh, this property in 1977. And so I started uh, to become a minority owner as well as the general manager for, for the company that uh, come in here to uh, start manage this uh, uh, being a historic landmark uh, uh, in a town named Locke with a tremendous uh, background and used to be all lived uh, by the Chinese. Actually, this unique situation here where in 1915 the group of Chinese actually built this town and uh, mainly for their own groups to live. Uh, all together 50 some buildings and they named the town Lock because at that time China's can, Chinese cannot own land so they released the ground from uh, a gentleman called George Lock. He's a Caucasian a big rancher uh, in, the, uh, in the Delta area and so he leased this area about 10 acres to the Chinese to build the town for themselves and that's how he started and then later on in, night, in the 70s uh, the state recognized the unique part of the history of the town being built by the Chinese for the Chinese and named the, the, it as a state level uh, historic uh, district and later, I mean, actually in 1990, was designated as a federal government's uh, uh, national historic uh, landmark. So this is a very unique part of the history where it involved uh, Chinese Americans and uh, uh, becomes a big part that of the I sell in uh, my store is actually imports from China because when I first came to town in 1977, uh, I noticed uh, at that time as a lot of most of the Chinese residents already left and the young generation not uh, they not uh, satisfied about remaining in the, in the Delta area where most of the jobs only involve in, uh, farming uh, and then of course we do have the other part being uh, recreation too but still this is not the lifestyle that uh, most of the younger Chinese are uh, looking for they're more into becoming some kind of a professional and so they usually leave to go to uh, universities a different area and then uh, settle down for uh, jobs wherever they can uh, get in, in those areas and never really feel that they wanted to come back to live in Lock. and then of course in the, when I first came it's just that I thought that since there's lack of uh, Chinese residents and I look around the stores, most of the stores uh, were closed. And then of course, at that time being designated as a historic uh, district, 
we start having more and more tourists coming into town and then uh, most of the expectation from the tourists is to see something to do with the Chinese since this is a Chinese historic district and so I feel at that time maybe I should start up uh, a store that sells uh, imports from China and the timing was very good because uh, in 1979 um, President Carter um, and uh, the Chinese government uh, started the diplomatic uh, relationship and so which means that uh, things uh, can be import export to China uh, at that from that point on and I seized the opportunity in 1982 I started the, the actually the store and then start import going to Hong Kong and uh, purchase uh, merchandise and uh, import it here to uh, back to my store and it works out very well because at that time a lot of people come into my store and then they are amazed how a lot of uh, Chinese merchandise uh, involve uh, very skillful uh, handicraft work and the price they look at is just unbelievably uh, inexpensive because apparently labor costs in China in those days are very low uh, and so I actually have a pretty successful business at that time and also satisfy my desire to promote uh, lock and to uh, satisfy the visitors' expectation to see something. What I have here uh, in front of me are some of the items that I, a small uh, amount of items that I carry in my store. And for instance, uh, we do have uh, a, a big desire to uh, uh, educate people about the town's history by selling several books that has uh, locks history involved and to me it has uh, myself uh, more because uh, a couple of books I know the author very well and actually I was here in town when, when I uh, watched them do the research work and here's one book that called One Day One Dog and this is a bilingual book by uh, uh, Mr. Lerm he used to be a professor in uh, UC Davis that he, he taught uh, Asian American studies for many years in the 70s and the 80s. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away uh, a few years ago. And this book has a lot of research work done through uh, Mr. Leung's uh, interview with uh, a lot of residents in Lock in those years. Unfortunately, most of them uh, have uh, passed on now. And also, since he also came from Hong Kong originally, so he is fluent in Chinese also. So later on, he translated the book into Chinese. So uh, I actually benefit some uh, Chinese visitors come in that uh, may not be able to read English to also know the town's history through the Chinese writing. And then the other one, more famous one is The Bitter Melon. This book's been uh, I believe this is the sixth edition. It came out first in the 80s. And the uh, reason this book sells well is that it has a lot of good historic pictures involved. And also, the paper that they use and all the things is very nice, make the print job look very nice. And also, you go through the book and then you actually see uh, many uh, former residents being interviewed. And you, when you read, read, read the book, it's almost like you read about uh, those uh, former residents telling you the life experience living in Locke. Very interesting to read. And then the latest cover is this book published by Acadia Book Publisher, which is very aggressively this past few years. The Acadia Publishers wish to encourage uh, small towns across the country to uh, collect some old photos and get a historian to fill in the text about the photos. Uh, so that it's a book with a lot of valuable photos. And uh, I noticed that when customers walk in, they love to flip through uh, uh, the book about the area where they involve and try to locate to see if any people that they can identify. 
and uh, I also help the merchants to sell it when as soon as they spotted somebody that uh, they like to uh, they, they can recognize and they instantly want to buy it and then of course besides the book I do have other merchandise like this particular gold fish uh, in Chinese culture fish is a symbol of uh, abundance uh, this is excellent if you have uh, somebody that start a business or somebody in, involved in business to uh, uh, send it as a gift to the business because this is the symbol for uh, merchants to make a lot of money and then of course the other thing that if you notice the arts done by Chinese uh, artists a lot of time you be involved with horses because horses has a lot of movement and the artists love to uh, either paint them or to uh, use uh, uh, embroideries or to uh, carve uh, objects uh, in uh, form of horse because they have so many different movements that generates very interesting uh, stance that they can uh, create and then of course I do have uh, what people like about this uh, what Chinese call happy coats and it's like a very comfortable um, uh, in-house wear uh, for both actually it's beauty sex it's a lot of times uh, men buy this too because it comes in very diff many different colors and it's a very easy to fit uh, wear at home and uh, uh, we Chinese call them happy coats and actually in, uh, it originated from a Japanese uh, costume actually they call the kimono well unfortunately we suffer through just like the whole country suffer started back in uh, 2008 it's unbelievably bad uh, that downturn uh, for a couple of years and very fortunately uh, we see the bounce back just like a lot of e economists uh, uh, saying and projecting and but still we like to uh, have uh, more visitors come and, and all that thing and then of course uh, we know a lot of time that we have to do something to generate more traffic so that's why we every every year we do two events first event that we always do as law foundation will is uh, in the second saturday of uh, may we have what we call the asian pacific spring festival uh, mainly a month of uh, asian american uh, heritage month and uh, we figure this kind of event is very very fit for this community being a historic district and uh, what we do uh, for the past four years now is that we close the historic Main Street and then we will um, uh, have uh, vendors, uh, food vendors, uh, vendors with uh, all kinds of merchandise to come in and uh, uh, also we have performers that will come in to do some uh, 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 performance mostly including um, uh, something related to the Asian culture and usually that would mean uh, dragon dance, lion dance, uh, taiko drums, uh, all kinds of folk dances, Chinese music, other kind of music and uh, we, it's a well mixed performance and so it, it usually lasts for six seven hours and it's free so uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more and more people we notice actually each year we have big attendance and so it's very upbeat to all of us that volunteer to the event and so next year actually our problem with will be to uh, uh, locate for more parking space so that we can uh, accommodate uh, more visitors mm -hmm.